Good evening to everybody. My name is Helmut Schütte. I'm the Dean of CIBS. And I have the great honor and pleasure to introduce our guest this evening, Mr. Shibulal. As you know, Mr. Shibulal is the CEO and Managing Director of Infosys. And I guess everybody here in the room has heard about Infosys as one of the great companies which has for years already paved the way for emerging country multinationals. Seven of us came from a middle class background. We were working together in PCS when Infos was formed. We actually did not give them a very hard time because we left over a period of almost a year. We had no money, so we started out with $250 as capital, which was mostly loaned from our uh, family, otherwise we had no money. $250 was 10,000 rupees in 1981. As I said, it used to take us a year or two to get a phone, two years to get a car, and more importantly, it used to take me 10 days to go to the bank to get permission to send money to money outside India. There is something called Foreign Exchange Regulations Act, FERA. And under uh, Foreign Exchange Regulations Act, if you spend a dollar more than what they allow you to do, one dollar, you can be put in jail. But we did, we took a bet. It's important to remember that in 1981, we took a bet on two different things. Number one, we took a bet that technology will become ubiquitous. Right? Computers were just in the infancy in 1981. Nobody in the world was thinking that you can actually globalize services in 1981. And we took the bet that we will be able to globalize services. And to our left, both these bets, technology becoming ubiquitous and globalization of services, both played out over the next 15 to 20 years. And it's very, very important that these two bets uh, played out and that made us successful as time, um, time went by. It happened in stages. It happened definitely in stages. It was not a sprint. It was a marathon. That is very important to remember. It did not happen overnight. Along the journey, we not only built a, an organization, of course we built Infosys, we also built an industry, as well as created a brand for India. So, after 30 years, we are more than $7 billion in revenue, probably 7.6 or so this year. 155,000 employees from 89 nationalities. Operations in 76 countries, um, in 76 cities. And um, um, we run about 8,000 programs, um, 6,000 to 8,000 programs at any point in time across the globe. Now, going back, the genesis of India and Infosys. How did it, this happen and what are the factors which contributed to this journey? I talked about globalization and technology, but there are many other factors which played out into this journey. Just after independence, India came out with education reforms. This is in 1950. Now remember, 1950, 90% of the Indians were living below poverty line. During that period, the leadership had the vision to create an education reform which laid the foundation for education in India. So the IIT education was um, world class. It produced world class engineers. The management education was world class. It produced world class management experts. At the same time, majority of them went outside India looking for opportunities. In 1990, India had a payment crisis. When the payment crisis happened, the license raj was abolished. And um, the liberalization happened, the economic liberalization happened. So license raj was abolished. Uh, we, the Foreign Exchange Regulation Act was abolished. They came up with a new act. A lot of things changed. 
and we were at the right place at the right time with the right idea, the right bet and the right set of people. I, we had prepared ourselves for almost 10 to 12 years by 19, early 90s, betting on globalization and technology, innovation through global delivery model, having the right set of talent. We had recruited some of the best talent in India and we were right there and we took advantage. We took advantage of that over the next 10 to 15 years. And of course, the telecom reform happened in the late 90s. So in the early 90s, we set up the first global network. We set up a network between um, India and the uh, US to which we could, uh, we could connect clients. Strategically, we decided that we will do three things. Number one, by 90s, we realized that the most important ingredient to our business our people, right? We have to get the best talent, the best talent available. So we decided that we will invest in our people. We set up a training program which is best in class even today. Number two, we were playing in the cost arbitrage in 80s. Right? The cost of a talent in the US is $100,000, but we were getting paid $80,000 or $60,000. And when you do in India, it will be only $30,000. So we were playing on the cost arbitrage. We figured out that in 1990 itself, that in early 90s, that this is not a sustainable model. We decided to compete on quality rather than on cost. So we said that we will build world-class infrastructure for our people. So three important things which we did strategically from the beginning of 90s. We built, we recruited the best talent, we um, enabled them and retained them, we built world-class infrastructure and we started on a quality journey. I have said all kinds of good things. Right? I said, we did this, we did that, we did everything played out. That's not true. There has been enough mistakes on the way. Um, we have made mistakes in between. We got into hardware as a uh, business. We got out of it. We were in between into reselling um, software in India. We got out of that. So, this is a journey. The next thing is that this is, you can clearly see, 32 years is not a sprint. It is not a 100 meter race. It is a real marathon. So this has been a marathon and not a sprint. And one good thing which we did on day one, one very good thing which we did on day one, when we created our business plan, there was one portion which was missing. One important portion was not in the business plan. Can anybody guess? We had no exit plan. In today's business plan, most um, business plans have an exit plan and we didn't have it. And that helped. <laughs> so, once again, thank you very much.